you have to make your life what you want it. You know, I, I tried the whole nine to five, you know, Monday through Friday thing and found that I spend my whole day thinking about all the things I wanted to do when I got home, get home, make dinner and just crash out, <laughs> you know, so there wasn't time for all the other parts, parts of me. Welcome to Peak Pyrography, where we discuss artistry and process with creators in the wood burning and pyrography community. I'm your host, Justine Fetty. I was introduced to wood burning in 2020, and I haven't put my burner down since. If you've been enjoying the podcast, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on this episode, or give it a rating on whatever platform you're using. That's a great way for you to support the show and to help me continue making it. Today's guest is Betsy Bottomer of Betsy B Studios. I was really excited to get Betsy on the podcast to talk about her Save the Bees art challenge. And when I say B, that's B as in the letter, not the cute little critters. And Save the Bees represents crit- pollinators of all sorts, including bees, butterflies, bugs, birds, beetles, and so many more. Today we talked about the challenge in depth while we were recording and Right now the challenge is live, so go ahead and check out the hashtag and join in the fun. I was fascinated to hear Betsy's pollinator origin story, and no, it's not quite the same bug bite origin story as Spider-Man. But what I didn't realize before recording is that Betsy's history with ecology runs deep and includes multiple degrees on the subject. Betsy's commitment to our tiny friends is inspiring, and I've definitely learned lots from her during the Save the Bees challenges in the past. So much so that when a pollinator decided to visit me in studio, aka a moth landed on my arm while we were recording, I definitely jumped, but I didn't freak out and swat at it, like I would have in the past. Thanks to the educational content that Betsy puts out with the challenge, I knew I didn't have to worry. And now before you worry too much about how long I'm rambling, let's hear from Betsy. Hi Betsy, welcome on Peak Pyrography. Hi, thank you, Justine. Thanks for having Uh, me. (laughs) How are you doing today? Good, how are you? It's a beautiful day. It is. Always a beautiful day. Um, (laughs) Where are you you coming here from today? I'm in northwest Pennsylvania, uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere. If you drive an hour south of Lake Erie, that's about where I'll be. (laughs) Fun, fun. Uh, I'm not particularly familiar with the east coast (laughs) that's all right (laughs) i don't know if you even consider yourself east coast (laughs) we're kind of in between midwest and east coast somewhere i I guess it's called mid-atlantic technically okay so (laughs) yeah anything east of like detroit i don't know (laughs) (laughs) um so what what are you working on right now um well right now uh, we have save the bees coming up And that's really taken most of my attention. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Save the Bees is an art challenge that me and a couple of my friends uh, put on for, this will be the fourth year now. And uh, we really put a lot into it and we have a lot of fun with it. Um, So that's that's been taking up most of my time this week. (laughs) So Save the Bees, that's B as in like the letter B, right? Yes, that's the letter B. Um, and our one of our main goals for this is to really communicate that pollinators are more than just the honeybees. Um, don't get me wrong, I love my honeybee. Uh, it's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, but there are probably, I think they estimate 2,000 species of pollinators. Um, and that includes uh, bees, butterflies, moths, uh, bats and some other mammals, birds, uh, particularly hummingbirds, and uh, there's beetles and a bunch of other bugs that are also pollinators. So I, we're really I see where all the bees attention. come in. <laughs> yeah, so we really try to bring attention to all of them as well. So with with this challenge, you're, it's it's an art challenge that you're putting out there, and each week has a different pollinator theme. That's correct, and we try to keep it to one prompt a week, uh, and that just our our whole we want it to be stress-free. I mean, a lot of art challenges have a prompt, you know, every day or every other day. And I know personally, that's just impossible to keep up with. So we really try to spread it out a little bit and uh, just make, uh, give each group of pollinators their own week to really focus on them. And so that's throughout the whole month of June that you're doing that. 
Mm -hmm. It is. It and runs for five weeks. So it actually starts next Monday um, and runs actually into July a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And you're fo you focus on, like you said, a different pollinator each week and mm -hmm. you have people submit their art and then you share that art all around. We do. Um, so we usually wait and let people share a lot of their artwork um, anytime, like Monday through Friday or Saturday. And then we try to share as much as we can over the weekend because during the week, uh, me or my co-host, we're just trying to share as much educational information as we can about sure. that volunteer group. So. Sure. And I know that I definitely learned some stuff from you in previous years. And right now here in Colorado, we're having the Miller Moth migration. Okay. <laughs> um, and, you know, you turn on the lights and there's, oh, there's one there. There's one over there. <laughs> we have to open up the doors every day and just let the moths go back out into the wild. Um, but I learned a lot from you and teaching my, my four-year-old to like, it, they're they're not bad. They're not scary. They're gonna help our food grow. We're not gonna kill them all. We're gonna open the doors and let them out. Exactly. Yeah, I like to hear that. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that that's a really cool challenge that you're working on. And what, uh, where did that idea for the art challenge come from? You know, I was trying to think about that the other day, and I'm not really sure. I think it spurred from. Um, I actually, I have a doctorate in ecology. And I grew right. up um, with with honeybees my whole life. And uh, my dad actually started keeping bees a couple of years before I was born. So I won't say how many years that's been now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so bees have just always been like a huge part of my life. And, you know, add in the ecology and nature and just pollinators as a whole. And, you know, from the ecology standpoint, seeing, you know, how imperiled they are and how much we rely on them. And so... I stopped. Um, I worked as an ecologist for a little while. I actually worked on Lake Erie um, and fisheries. Um, but after I had my daughter, I just kind of decided that, you know, spending weeks at a time on a research vessel wasn't really <laughs> the mom life that I really envisioned for myself. So I quit doing that and stayed at home and started the art thing. And um, But I still kind of missed having that little bit of you know, ecological connection, doing something, you know, reaching sure. out in the world and, and trying to, you know, make a little bit of change and educate people on what's going on around them a little bit. So, so after, after you got off the research vessels, you're sitting at, are you still working in another job or? Nope, I'm just a stay at home mom. And that's when I started up my art business because it was okay. kind of, well, we, we don't we don't say do. just to say stay at home mom because that is a <laughs> yeah, I know. that is a hard really full-time job that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so you stay at home mom and you've got your art that you get to work on as well yep and that's that's betsy b studios that's correct yep and um if people are looking for you online you're at betsy b studios and then you, on your website betsybstudios.com yep that's correct and when he and there when you got B it's B E E. Yeah, that is B E E there. Yes. Um. So you you got off the research vessels. You came home. You started full time momming, and mm -hmm. that and then this initiative kind of grew from a need to connect. All of my different aspects. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's that's really cool. Um. So you've been doing this, this is the fourth year, and you've got some, some, uh, you said friends and co-hosts and sponsors that you work with for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every year, I think we've tried to make it a little bit bigger, um, and it just, we keep adding things to it and uh, making it, you know, a little bit more and adding more stress <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's kind of funny, like we always, you know, try to say you know it's a no stress art challenge there's no pressure but it doesn't stop me from stressing about it um, oh no but, but no I mean really it's just a, it's a lot of fun it's just a lot of work um trying to get a lot to manage on your end yeah make yeah, sure the I'm posts not... go up on the right time and you've got the right person tagged in the right places exactly and, and, and you know May always seems to just whiz by super fast and like here we are it's almost June already um when I'm talking to you and it's, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know where it went but it's it's all good 
So. Yeah. But yeah, I what? have an amazing team of friends and uh, colleagues, you know, that jump, jumped in with me on this and uh, we have a lot of fun with it. So we're excited it, this year. It's a great challenge and I've definitely enjoyed I, seeing it in years past, but I haven't pr- been able to participate. So I'm hoping to participate some this year. Yeah, definitely jump in there with us. What have you learned from hosting this challenge? And what are some things that, you know, if someone else wanted to host a challenge, you'd be like, oh, yeah, but don't start there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm a bad person for saying don't because I'm always trying to add more. Um, it's just... The big take home would just be, you know, try to have fun with it, you know, try not to take everything too seriously. And uh, people really do enjoy, you know, learning new things. You know, I was a little worried setting out on this that, you know, lecturing everybody on pollinators and everything. People would be like, yeah, I don't I don't need to hear that. But it's been really well received. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of really good feedback from it. Mm -hmm. That's, and this, that's really you know, cool. this, yeah, and really just to give people time, I think, is a big one. I think, you know, everybody is super busy, especially this time of year. And, uh, you know, just giving people time to get those prompts in and stuff really kind of helps our participation. So. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And and that time is nice because, as you say, some challenges are like, do something every day. And... <laughs> yeah, like I've tried to do those and I just... I can't keep up with it. It's just a lot. And and even if you've got time to prep, then it feels like you're rushing to get your content out. And Mm -hmm. if you've got a week to get a thing out, you've got time to put up a reel for it and put up a behind the scenes post and put up a final one and Mm -hmm. take your time with it a little bit more. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we just want people to have fun and not stress about it. So yeah, learn something. (laughs) <laughs> when March, April, May roll around, do you stress about this challenge or is it, do you dread it or is it something you love oh, doing no. or something think, in the middle? Yeah. I mean, every year I say I'm going to start sooner, <laughs> <laughs> start prepping sooner. It doesn't always work out. Um, no, it's, it's the week before where I start to get a little stressed, just trying to organize all the raffles and prizes and donations and getting everybody, you know, on a sort of schedule. But no, I think, you know, all in all, I really look forward to it and uh, have a lot of fun you know, trying to figure out what else can we do? What can we add? You know, and that sort of how thing. can we grow yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And looking for, you know, new, new ways to, you know, you know, new things to teach people about pollinators and fun facts and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and then pulling out the your favorite stuff from last year and just uh-huh, yeah there are plenty of people who haven't seen it or need that reminder <laughs> yeah we definitely recycle so that's one benefit of doing the same thing every year is you can you can tap back into some of that old work <laughs> yeah do you get to create for this challenge I try to yeah I really try to participate um I have a, a little series I have mostly designed and ready to go it's um, I don't know if you saw it in the past. I made, they're called chimes. I actually make them out of spoons that didn't meet my quality control. And I just cut off the handle and hang bells from them. So I'm doing oh, one of those cool. for each of the pollinators this year. And hopefully they turn out. See. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I can see a couple of them in the back, a couple pollinators hiding behind oh, your yeah. head. Yeah, we got a couple out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, where, so obviously the bees in Betsy Bee Studios came from the honey bees in your whole life. Is, yeah. And is that where the, where your name and where your business kind of originated? Cause I love a name story. <laughs> it did. Um, when I first set out to create a business, um, I actually started off as the bee tree shop. And I did this growing up, not only did my dad have honeybees, we had an apiary out in the field, but there was also a giant walnut tree, like right in the middle of our yard that had a honeybee hive in it. Like I had a swing from this, you know, this tree and everything. And like, they never bother me. They just, the, the bee tree, it was always just part of, you know, my childhood. So I thought, you know, that was kind of a, a cool name for a shop. And, um, 
as time went by and I started to kind of rebrand a little bit and really feel, you know, what I wanted my business to be, I just realized that, you know, when you see the bee tree shop, you know, what would you expect going in there? Well, it would probably be honey and lip balms and, you know, other bee, beeswax candles, that sort of thing. Not necessarily art. Um, and I also sure. wanted something just you know, a little more identifying, a little bit more like, okay, this is my, you know, my thing. Um, so that's when I switched over to Betsy B Studios. Um, I do think if I ever opened up like a little physical store, I'd probably still call it the Bee Tree Shop. Um, I still use that on some of my other stuff. Like I make wood conditioner and like my brand on there, I still have the Bee Tree. Um, oh, sure. So I still, I still use that here and there. Um, and then do you my- sell that conditioner? Mm-hmm, I do. Yeah. But so for my own personal artwork, I, you know, I stamp Betsy Bees on it. And, uh, but yeah, it's all about the bees, I guess. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's a great connector. It's there, there's a lot of things about the bees that kind of yeah. go hand in hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've talked a little bit about pollinators and how that gets you excited. Are, is there other things that you get excited to create art featuring oh sure i mean if (laughs) if you've seen my art you probably know it's like i love critters like animals of all kinds like i'm pretty sure there's an animal like in every single one of my pieces like i have such intricate details as well (laughs) thank you but yeah i just i fill my life with critters and my artwork with critters and uh and i suppose you know nature in general uh growing up you know and having that fascination with the natural world that you know plays a part and uh, folklores and stories and uh, <clears throat> even I have a lot of like Celtic and Nordic ancestry and that you know gets pulled in uh, a lot in a lot of my artwork sure you can see that a lot in your art and I just I like to see the patterns in nature you know whether it's like spirals or you know branching patterns or like the hexagon I did a piece it's a snowflake slash honeybee uh, piece because they're both hexagon uh, yeah metric centered so you know just seeing that sort of thing looking beyond like the surface of what you see and seeing the connections that's really cool (laughs) and I can like I don't know that I've seen that piece but I have ideas flying from from you saying that Yeah, it's my winter bees piece. Oh, um, you cool! You can see it there. Yeah, and this this actually started a whole series about how honeybees live. So the the concept of this is honeybees don't hibernate; they cluster together in a big ball in the center of the hive, and uh, they just kind of vibrate and keep each other warm uh, through that method with like you know the, with the winterness around it. So that's kind of where that came from. Um, that is a really cool piece with that radial symmetry in there and <laughs> yeah. I bet that was meditative to burn oh that's yeah absolutely I pieces like that are a lot of fun especially to see them come together at the end and and you as the artist can see like the uniqueness in each different piece of the radial symmetry <laughs> and the rest of us see the same thing over and over but you're like oh but this one's wing is a little bit more this yeah, one's like this wing one is... I goofed up right there yeah. <laughs> I just you know got got distracted yeah <laughs> those are really cool pieces thank you do you get to do you in general create what you want to create and then sell that work or is it more custom orders and people specifically requesting things I mostly do what I want to create um, and I, I do take customs once in a while, um, but they're a lot more stressful. Um, I worry about those a lot more, you know, and, um, <clears throat> and I have so many of my own ideas that it's, it's nice to just be able to just kind of do my own thing. And if people want to buy it, then you know, we'll go from there. So, but yeah, yeah so I mean, you I do, do what you want and then and there, but yeah, offer it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a nice way to do it. It is. Yeah, I tried doing a lot of customs for a while and it was just, I don't know. I mean, I enjoy a lot of my customs once I get into them, but I also, 
you know, it's it's harder to really get in the flow of them sometimes because they're a little bit more forced um, than just sort of just kind of going with what's coming out of my brain. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, and so then it, do you keep a sketchbook or something? How do you keep track of all of these ideas that you're having and um, get them from your brain to the wood? <laughs> I do have a sketchbook. Um, my husband bought me an iPad a couple years ago for Mother's Day. And it was funny because I was like, I don't think I'm ever going to use that. And now I, he's like, are you ever going to put that thing down? <laughs> he's like, instant have. regret. Instant regret. <laughs> yeah. I have so many Procreate files on there of ideas and I think probably 20 sketches that are like ready to go and be burned and stuff. So do you sketch right on the, do you sketch it in the book and then sketch it on the wood or do you, or on your iPad and then, or do you go on iPad printing transfer of some sort? Um, I do the iPad and then actually I have one right here. I print it out and use some graphite paper to transfer it. So that's, this is an example of a custom request. And so this was kind of um, a customer of mine was just kind of gave me an idea of what she wanted, like a subject matter and, and let me go with it. So yeah. um, this is, so I printed it out and I just transfer it with graphite because I am a super messy sketcher. Like I go before the iPad, I went through so many erasers because <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I throw stuff down and it's always changing. And I like to call it, a design marinating I just kind of like to let them sit for a while and see how they how they change and evolve so just pick it back up and see if mm -hmm. you need to adjust something before it goes <laughs> into the permanent state yeah and a lot of times like I'll just have like a sketchbook or the iPad like laying on my kitchen counter and every time I walk by I just like add something or change something or get stuck there for two hours you know <laughs> <laughs> standing at the kitchen counter you're like yeah. I'll, I'll get to the dishes in a minute <laughs> yeah exactly so <laughs> meanwhile yeah. my, my daughter's like mom you forgot my hot chocolate or whatever it's been in the microwave for half an hour <laughs> <laughs> you're like it's fine it's fine I'm doing art right now yeah, right, exactly <laughs> yeah does she do art with you Oh yeah, she. I, my downstairs is like wallpapered, and and her artwork. She just she sketches stuff and hangs it up. So, yeah, that's she, amazing. She likes it. <laughs> awesome. What what kind of tools do you use? So we talked about your graphite paper. What's mm -hmm. your burner? Um, I use What's your favorite wood. nib? <laughs> yeah. So I use a coal wood uh, wood burner, a coal wood galaxy. Um, it's actually downstairs right now. I work a couple different places. That one behind me is the first good burner I bought. It's a detail master. They don't even make them anymore. Um, <laughs> but it was. A but yours one. is still working for you. Yeah, it still works. It works great. It's actually a really hot. Uh, it burns really hot. Um, but, Do you like uh, to burn hot? No, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I actually burn really low, low temperatures. Um, so, but that's yeah, how you get I all use, your shading. Yeah, I so I primarily use coal wood. Um, let's see here. I have Gosh, a lot I love that. That's so many. <laughs> I know, I have so many. I'm just, I'm um, gonna sit here and, and be jealous and drool over that okay. collection. But I do like probably 90% of my work with this one. It's just like the Can you hold that up a little tip. bit more? Let me see where my camera, there we go. Yeah. This is the C right. So just that little one. Um, I like my, it's, I think it's called the round shader. I do do a lot with that one too. And those are really my primary tips. Everything else I just kind of use once in a while. Um, the rounded heel, rounded heel tip gets used a lot for your, your deeper line, sharper lines, I guess. Yeah. And the nice thing about cool wood burners is Optima pens. They're interchangeable. You don't need an adapter or anything. Um, I do really that, like That is I, really nice. Yeah, I recently tried them and I, I do really like them. Plus, it's my favorite color. So <laughs> that, that teal color? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, it, it's not everything, but it certainly helps if it looks good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are definitely things you're like. I just I can't it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't look good enough I can't do it mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> like, it but it's like... perfectly functional <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah 
<clears throat> yeah. Um, what, what kind of wood do you like to burn on? Um, if I had my or choice. Or surfaces. Yeah, I mean, I I will burn on anything I, I find, really. Um, my favorite wood is probably maple. Um, I... I really like maple and birch. Basswood's okay, but it's honestly a little bit too soft for me to get all those really fine details. Um, they tend to get a little bit mushy um, for me. Um, I do a lot of cutting boards and spoons, um, you know, and then you know, I have other little ornament pieces. I burn on a lot of birch plywood. Um, this These actually came from woodcrafter.com. They have a lot of really nice little cutouts, and they'll even do custom things for you, which is oh, that's is really so you nice. can mm -hmm. get exactly what you need or want. Yeah, my cutting boards—they are maple. Um, they're locally made. A buddy of mine from high school actually started a very successful cutting board business, uh, Jones Cutting Boards, um, on Instagram, and he's very super nice in that he'll he'll. Uh, he'll uh, make any requests that I make of him pretty much and he's he's super nice about it so he and uh makes him out of maple which is a really nice but hard light wood um so so yeah I don't know that's that's super nice it's nice to have that connection with a local wood manufacturer mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and I mean, my husband, even we have like a small hobby sawmill and we have loads of cherry drying right now. So hopefully someday I can, you know, make some cherry boards and stuff. But, you know, then I have some other things that, you know, these boards came from a bargain bin somewhere. <laughs> I don't even remember <laughs> what store. I'm like, okay, I can take those. And I just hoard wood wherever I go. <laughs> uh, I think that's so common like oh I'll take that and I'll find something eventually to burn on exactly. it exactly yeah yeah that's cool and so then when you're burning what kind of safety equipment do you use um I, I have an RZ mask um, I use particularly if I'm using something that has been finished before um or that you're not sure about because you yeah grabbed it from an that, op shop yeah um you know the bargain bin wood I definitely use a mask with that but, um, so, but like I said, I don't make a whole lot of smoke when I burn because I burn at a very low temperature. So, but yeah, that's about it as far as safety gear. Yeah. And when you're, when you're making stuff, what's happening in the background? <laughs> uh, usually everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I have a six year old. Um, she was usually Are you able to... Out. Do some burning while she's around? Oh, yeah. She's usually around. That's one of the reasons I, I kind of set up shop at our dining room table. I actually kind of scooched it against the wall and turned it into a, a workstation because she gets bored upstairs after a while. Like, Mommy, come downstairs. All right. So I do a lot of work down there. We also have three dogs um, that need to go out about every five minutes, I think. Um, <laughs> they'll take turns. So they're like, I yeah, need 15 yeah, every 15 minutes. they never all go out at the same time. They have to stagger it out. Um, so, you know, I have a house full of animals and a like, six-year-old. And But if I actually do get a quiet moment, um, I do like to listen to audiobooks uh, while I burn. So that's kind of my thing. So. Yeah. If I watch TV, I just get too distracted and just stare at the TV instead of burning. But audio books... And, really... and then you end up burning your fingers. Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a hole through the wood. Um, but yeah, audio books really let me just kind of like zone, like get in, really get in the zone and, and uh, you know, kind of peace out for a little while. So <laughs> Those are so nice and you mm -hmm. can... And then you go back and you're like, oh, yeah, that's what was happening in the book when I burned this piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all stuck together. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we've talked a little bit about what your online presence is. You've got your website and your Instagram. And are there other sites that you spend time on or put effort into? <laughs> Um, I have a Facebook account. It's still under the Bee Tree Shop because changing your name on there is really difficult. Um, but I don't spend a lot. I, any post on Facebook is literally copy and pasted from Instagram. So. That's okay. That's okay. It's yeah. different audiences. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. 
But yeah, that's about it. So. Um, and then I've really enjoyed seeing some of the way that you present your art. What do you do for your photography, lighting, other things f- to create your social images? Um, it's really, I mean, I have a lot of fun um, with my flat lays and stuff, you know, running around and <clears throat> scrounging with little bits of nature <laughs> and whatnot I have laying around the house to use. Um, but honestly, like, <laughs> I just use my kitchen island, like at the late morning, like it's like the I found it has the best lighting. Um, you know, sometimes I get a really rainy, cloudy day and I just can't take a picture that day, but it really, <clears throat> it has the lighting that I want for my, you know, online aesthetic, I guess. And I, I've tried, yeah. you know, posting things at night or reels with artificial light and I just didn't like them. And honestly, they didn't get the views and the likes either. So I just hold out and wait for the right kind of day to get pictures and, um, just do it right there in my kitchen, usually with my cat trying to knock everything off and my <laughs> helpful cat. Thank <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> so yeah, just just my kitchen island on a, a nice day. And is it your phone or do you have some other? Um, well, I use camera? I use my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I, there you, you know, go. I, I mean, I tried getting fancy, and honestly, it just wasn't worth all the extra time and transferring and all that other stuff. So there's a lot of steps to that. Mm-hmm, they really are and I just don't don't have the time for it so. and it's nice to just <laughs> snap the photo on your uh-huh. phone and yeah yeah especially if you've got it set exactly the way you want and you just need to do a little like filter adjustment or something when mm-hmm. you get it to Instagram yeah. yeah I do some real easy like right in the program edits and add a watermark and throw it in there and it's call good it enough. good yeah yeah <laughs> get on to the yeah. next thing <laughs> Um, yeah, that's really cool. Well, let's take a break here real quick and okay. we'll be back in a minute. Sounds good. All right. And we're back now with Betsy from Betsy B Studios. So Betsy with, with kids and Betsy B Studios and, you know, more than just being a stay-at-home mom, um, what are you able to do to take care of yourself? Oh, I don't know. I think uh, the biggest thing that I've really found is just um, you have to make your life what you want it. You know, I I tried the whole nine-to-five, you know, Monday through Friday thing and found that I spend my whole day thinking about all the things I wanted to do when I got home, get home, make dinner and just crash out, (laughs) you know, so there wasn't time for all the other parts, parts of me. I mean, I, you know, I wanted to, you know, I was always kind of an artist. I always had this dream of doing a little art business of some sort. And, you know, I've always gardened and done house projects and, you know, now I'm a mom and, you know, I've, fill my house and my yard with animals and it just you know not having time for that sort of thing you know it's kind of draining you know it wasn't what I wanted and a lot of things happened you know I mean I became a mom and then in 2021 I went through some pretty bad health issues and stuff and it it really kind of made you you know reevaluate life and what you want out of it so I think you know, just making your life what you really want to get out of it, I think. I mean, there really isn't anything, you know, people ask me what I do to unwind and relax, and usually it has to, you know, I sit down with my iPod and her iPad and sketch, sketch a new design, you know. I mean, like, that certainly <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, like, technically I'm working, but this is what I, you know, it's what but I But it do. feels like self-care. Yeah, it is, it is. So. I- I completely understand. That's for me, that's working on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's kind of funny because sometimes I'll be sitting there drawing or, you know, doing something and I'll feel like this tinge of guilt. Like I should be doing something else, but it's like, wait a minute, this is my job right now. So it's okay to do this. This is exactly what I'm yeah. should be doing. Those uh-huh. shoulds, man. Yeah. The Every shoulds. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. <clears throat> Yeah, but Insight. I mean, as, yeah, as far as other things, you know, like I said, I, I garden and work. We have a old farmhouse that we bought a 
like seven years ago now, and uh, we've dated it back, I think, to the 1860s. Wow. So I, <laughs> at any time, I have like no less than five projects <laughs> going on with the house and um, an old barn. We just got two sheep, so I just keep adding animals and house projects <laughs> and <laughs> keeping myself busy. So <laughs> with everything. So, That's amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and so now do you feel like you're getting to do the things that you would spend your nine to five dreaming about doing? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. So. Yeah, that that it, that's incredible. Switch yeah. to switch it up and say, this mm -hmm. is what I want to be doing. So this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I mean, in some regards, like I definitely miss the science and the ecology and that sort of thing. But I don't miss it 40 hours a week. <laughs> you know? Right. So, You're like, can I do um, that? you know, a couple of days yeah. a week. Yeah. And so that's, you know, I kind of get, get my fill from that, you know, trying to work it into the art, art stuff a little bit and the, the challenge and that sort of thing. So it all works out. Yeah. <clears throat> that's cool. Well, let's, let's, uh, we're going to play my favorite game here on peak pyrography now. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and that is where we uh, put you on a deserted Island. Okay. And you have to tell me, as a, as a wood burner, you're on this deserted island and you've got mm -hmm. one type of wood, one burner, one nib, and then one extra thing. What do you have with you on this island? All right. I have maple. I have coal wood, my coal wood galaxy, uh, my, my trusty little C-tip uh, pen over there, and probably a white Prismacolor pencil. <laughs> I have a tiny one around here. I think my cat might have ran off with it again. <laughs> I don't know where it went, but yeah, it's really about like that long at this point. So, and and is that to lighten up the dark spots or? I use that. Why to... a white one specifically? <laughs> I just like to add some highlights here and there. I think it really kind of makes designs pop a little bit more. Um, I really I've started using it a lot on a lot of different things. I don't add a lot of color. Um, but when I do, it's usually just kind of a little bit here and there. And, um, so, yeah, I, I like my trusty little white pencil. My cat <laughs> does, too. So I'll have to find that later. <laughs> you guys play hide and seek with it. Yeah, pretty much. So. The cat's like, Betsy keeps putting it back on the table. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, I have like a whole drawer full of them when they do finally disappear. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the cat's like, oh, good. Now I've got a whole, got a whole pile of these. Yeah, she's a thief. <laughs> well, and I like to take a moment here and talk about our community because mm -hmm. the pyrography community is so incredible. And yes. what are and and I mean just the community and communities in general can be so supportive. Mm -hmm. What are three accounts that we should all be following? And these don't have to all be pyros. They can be okay. businesses um, or other things. <laughs> That's a hard choice. It's, it's hard to narrow stuff down like that. Um, but, you know, I, I think as far as, you know, poll on the pollinator side of things, pollinator partnership, you know, they put out a lot of really good information and I love, you know, seeing the things that they post. A moth <laughs> just a showed up. Moth. Yep, there's a Miller moth just flying around, landed good on my timing. arm. Don't mind me. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to throw more than three at you, but my co-host for the challenge, um, Jen Duren, um, DiRenzo, Kate Broderick, uh, Megan from Honeybee's, Honeybee Designs, and Megan from Unstrung Studios. Um they're my they're my team. Uh, they they've been a lot of help and they do great artwork. Um, and they're just really good people. Um, if you don't follow them or know them, then you should. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So. Yes, they they are great people, great artists, and I've had or will have a couple of them scheduled already. Okay. <laughs> on other episodes of the podcast. Awesome. So make sure you guys tune in for those too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then what's what's a tip or trick that you find to be super useful, super helpful um, that you use all the time? Um, like art life, or, or... life or art or, you know, just Betsy's um, tips and tricks. <laughs> Betsy's tips and tricks. I would say just 
stay true to yourself and you know what you know what you want to produce as far as artwork goes um I know especially now like with the algorithm and social media and everything there's just a lot of pressure to you know maybe not necessarily do what what is you and I think just being you is going to get you the most organic following and get you the most you know loyal customers and friends and all that other stuff so um that's really what I've I've learned the most over the last couple of years is you just got to be you so but what what a great you know advice there because <laughs> It's not about the algorithm. They, the algorithm can go do whatever <laughs> yeah, it needs to do, um, but yeah, it'll do what it wants to anyway. So <laughs> uh, yeah, and but the people who want to or will follow you will follow you for you, and not mm-hmm. because the algorithm says right. follow follow this person. <laughs> yeah, yeah they'll, they'll follow you for you, and you know if you if you stay true to that and stop trying to you know pretend to put out what you think people want to see from you, as opposed to just who you are. I think. I think it works a little bit better. So yeah. It's a little it's a little bit easier at least anyway. So. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's That's I mean, great. even me, like I have to remind myself of that because there's just there's so much pressure, you know, from social media and I saw Get a post so, up every day, get this kind of post up, post yeah, a reel, yeah, post just, a mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, and and I saw a video the other day where it said that, you know, all of this social media and algorithm and stuff, they've, they've turned everything you do, especially as an artist, into a performance instead of a practice. You know, so you're yeah. always, you know, you're always performing. You're always like, okay, how do I make this into a reel? And for me, that's super distracting. You know, it's super, you know, it, it kind of has a very negative effect on my creative flow to stop what I'm doing, videotape myself, get everything set up. And it just, I've just, you know what, I'm going to video when I feel like videoing and (laughs) that'll be enough. So. Yeah. Well, good for you. Good for you. (laughs) It's still a struggle, but I try. That's what I tell myself anyway. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So the, I mean, coming, coming up, you've got the, save the bees challenge so mm-hmm. hopefully and that will be going on when this episode comes out okay. so hopefully we can get um lo- see lots of participation with that yep. and is there anything else big that you've got on the horizon any journeys we can follow you on um i can't really think of anything else i have a couple of series that i've been trying to get up and going but um, you know just day by day so well we'll we'll follow you at betsy b studios and awesome thank you so much and see what you put up (laughs) thank you for coming on today thank you so much for having me this was fun this is very fun (laughs) peak pyrography is produced by fetty studios and justine fetty our producer and sound engineer is kevin fetty If you enjoyed today's episode, please like and subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can share comments on today's podcast or suggestions for the future on Instagram at peakpyropodcast or via email at peakpyrography at gmail.com. That's P-E-A-K-P-Y-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y at gmail.com. Until next time, keep creating. I can't wait to see what you make next.